Greetings, I'm Caffeine Rage, and I'm back with the Sunday Sampler. This week, we're going to be taking a quick look at Far Loan Sales. This is an adventure puzzle platformer traveling game. It's a bit hard to describe. We'll get into that in a little bit. Published by Mixture, Mixture Vision and developed by Okomotive. And as per usual, this is a review copy. So, far loan sales. This is going to be a bit different. This is one of the rare instances that I've actually beat the game. And technically, that makes this not a first impressions. But I haven't really sat down and mulled over my thoughts. It's, it's still in the first impressions range. This is a very weird state. Let's just dive right in. And the title screen goes away, and this is our vehicle, and we wake up in the crew quarters. So, this is technically a puzzle platformer, but it's also a traveling game. You are in this vehicle, and you're traveling around a rather barren wasteland, and you could get out, get in. And I have to say, from the very get-go, this is an artistic game, and... That is going to be both a turn on and a turn off, depending on the person. It's unique. And it does some very strange things, particularly how they handle controlling this monstrosity. Because it's not as simple as sitting in the driver's seat and your controls switch over. No, it's all controlled by switches. So you have the brake, uh, steam boost, and if you let that go too long, the boiler kind of well, it nearly explodes. Burn things to put energy into the reactor and your throttle. And then you have winches and all sorts of things. Uh, like I said, this is a traveling game. Think of it almost as Journey with the pyromania of Little Inferno because you're constantly having to stop to get various things to into the, your reactor to burn. I'm not going to set that on fire just yet because I'm pretty much full up on energy. With a little bit of puzzle, a puzzle platforming almost Limbo-esque with some of the uh, very simplistic puzzles that throw uh, new twist and new ideas constantly at you. But overall, they're not that complex for the most part. There are a few times that the game's thrown a curveball at me here and there. So let's just drive forward. I've actually beaten this game, and that's why I say it's a little bit different. Uh, in that it's not technically a first impressions, but I'm, this is very, very, very early in my second playthrough. To the point where I know to hit the brake. And this is the... One of the first uh, real puzzle elements, or, or, I mean, it's a very simple puzzle, but still. And we'll grab some extra fuel because, you know, fuel is good. And you could also zoom in, but it's, yeah, very simple. And this, uh, the main goal of the game is to reach the end of your journey, really, because most of this... Uh, of the story and the uh, world is atmospheric. You know, there is a story here, but it's subtle. It's... I hate bringing up Dark Souls in this case because, uh, you know, everybody talks about, oh, it's the Dark Souls of this, it's the Dark Souls of that, but I'm more talking about how they handled the story, is that you have set pieces, you're, oh, the ball that I put in there which you don't really take fall damage, you just uh, kind of gracefully glide down. Come on, grab it. There we go. Uh, the story is very subtle in what you do. We're going to go uh, keep this. We'll put it up here. Put it on the hook. Delightful. All the backgrounds are, you know, tells a bit of a story, but overall... You're left guessing and filling in the blanks yourself. So, like I said, it's a very artistic game. 
And because of the subtlety, it's yeah, open to interpretation. And this is actually one of the first time or the, this is the first time that you get the sales. So you don't have to use the reactor. You can just go in with wind power, but also hit the throttle and get some speed in this bitch. And the yeah, you know, the music picks up, and that's one other thing is that okay, it's not the most yeah, it's not super high, real, highly realistic, but it does the job. It's a very pretty game, but the game is very washed out for the most part. There's hints of colors here and there outside of the bl black, white, and red. Well, get some power for the reactor and. Grab this, put it here, fill up the reactor, hit the speed boost, and that's part of this, is yep, getting in the rhythm of driving. And there's not too many games that has this way of handling the machinery, where you're constantly looking for your next uh, fuel stop, you're having to kind of do almost a studio game. Ghibli like manipulation of your rather unorthodox machine. As you know, kind of this atmospheric music pops up. It, it, I, I really like it. There, there's just this one flaw that keeps me from blanketing uh, or giving a blanket recommendation to those who appreciate a more artistic style of game. Is well, the price tag. This is a almost criminally short game. Yeah, I'm just kind of letting things coast because we need to stop here. Like I said, my second playthrough. Oh, I think I have to crash into this. But yeah, this... I beat this in just over three hours and that was mostly due to me uh, not picking up one little puzzle element. Uh, yeah. Right here we go. So you see the health bar on the central reactor got damaged a little bit. We could lower the sails. Come on, lower. There we go. Yeah, the, the the overall machine handles very clunkily, in, in a, both a good and a bad way. In that it's satisfying to uh, once you get going, but in some of the more hectic sections, the clunkiness is a definite flaw. You know, you accidentally do something, you actually got a, well, not technically a game over because it doesn't do it like that, it just sets you back at the next checkpoint, but, yo, I was set back because I hit the wrong thing, or that switch that operates the sail will also disengage the brake, so there's a couple times that you have to use the sail as a platform, but hitting that uh, button the wrong way will make it so that, it'll, well, as a matter of fact, I'll be, I could show you, so right there and I go to up here hit that oh I disengaged the brake it's not a fatal flaw but for someone that oh I'm gonna have to jump over this right that's right it's not a fatal flaw but for someone that you know wants more tight controls it could be a little frustrating I remember how yeah. Oh no, it's over here to the left. That's right. Yeah, there's sometimes that it's a little subtle on how to get through. So, so there we go. But I do like the sense of adventure. Oh, got the bell. We're gonna put that in our ship. But you get almost this hoarding sense of, yo, know, oh, there's something new, or I have to stop and get fuel because there's a couple of boxes that I can pick up. <laughs> oh, shame that doesn't ring, but oh well. 
but yeah. And we're off again. Not really the most of uh, difficult games. Uh, it's very simple to pick up, but yeah. Uh, there's no tutorial. There's. Uh, well, I shouldn't say there's no tutorial. There's a little bit of. Uh, just context. Okay, hit this button to pick up something, this button to jump, and that's really it. Everything else is left to where you discover on your own. You know, like when the sale is useful, when it's not. Oh. Uh, when you need to hit something with some speed. And I do like that. It's just, it's uh, a very short game. So, you know, it's tough to recommend for the $15 price tag. Give some more energy. And I think we're up to the next area. There's long stretches later on where... Yeah, you know, you're just kind of getting into the groove of uh, driving. Oh, that's not good. But you also have this kind of tedium of stopping every so often and grabbing fuel as well. Like, this barrel is actually really good fuel because that'll completely refill the reactor. We'll hold on to that for emergencies. The game can be beaten pretty quickly, but I, I think this is also one of those games that really warrants at least two playthroughs because, especially the opening areas where you're, you know, still learning how to control things, you're missing the bigger picture. Like, just look at this area, and I, this is actually one of the moments I wanted to highlight is, you know, the camera kind of pulling back and showing this ship graveyard uh, as the... the Vehicle automatically shuts down its sails. Oh. Just, a, it's a very environmental game. It's a, a game of not quite an adventure, but more of a series of set pieces and events. And like I said, it's a very artistic game, and because of that, it yeah, it's definitely not for everyone. But I'm very impressed with what they're able to do with the art style and with uh, the still somewhat simplistic uh, world design because it's you know it's not a hyper detailed world it's uh, very simplistic but they tell a good story with what they have and then i break the bridge Just top back in, pretend that never happened, and hit the throttle. Let's get out of here. I just wish I was able to uh, recommend it a little bit uh, uh, more widely, uh, widely because of uh, the price tag. That's my biggest uh, flaw with it. It's very expensive for what it is. But it's also a niche game, so. Oh, pardon me. And probably should get some. Oh, never mind. The wind is changing, so that sail is not useful anymore for now. So I think that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a pretty simplistic game. It's not one that I could show too much of, and I don't want to talk too much about the later events in the game because spoilers, and this is a game that's more of an experience than anything else. It's not particularly difficult for the most part. There, Like I said, there's a couple puzzles that I had issues with, mostly because I was missing a very small thing here or there. Oh, fuel. And slam on the brake. It's not much fuel, but it's fuel. And you're constantly adding onto the car by the time you uh, get to the end of the, your journey, uh, which I don't want to say what happens. Yeah, the car is vastly different. 
It has a good sense of progression. It's just yeah, short. And I think that's pretty much all I have to say, really, is you know, this is also going to be a short video. Yeah. But as always, oh, as we run out of power, we feel I should probably just put in the barrel. As always, constructive feedback is greatly appreciated. Oh, look, there's some more things to burn. And this is what I was talking about, that little inferno, uh, uh, pyram, um, pyromaniac tendency is that, oh, you see something on the ground that you can go burn? Go grab it. Shove it in the reactor and, uh, you know, uh, continue your way. Oh, that was a good one. I just love the, uh, you know, the background. I, I would say this is probably a game that you definitely want to play twice, though. So, yeah. Then you're starting to get, you know, up to the uh, four to six hour range. What? More things to burn. Excellent. Hey, look, it's a volleyball. I shall name him Wilson. And night is falling. And the lights come on. The wind starts to kick up. And they just do an amazing job with the atmosphere of the game. But yeah, I think we're done here. Constructive feedback in the comments below, or if you don't have anything to say, but want to let me know that you enjoyed or hated this, the appropriate buttons are there. And subscribe if you see more of the Sunday Sampler or my other content as we motor on to the coast through the dead of the night and through the storm nice of uh, transition and uh, nice sound effects as well <laughs> I think we're done here, though. I'll see you next time.